Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 23 of This Valorant Life. In this episode, we are coming back to Haven, uh, number one in our hearts. Uh, it was out of the map pool, and now it is back. So uh, we've done all the other maps, and we thought it would be good to come back to this and discuss this for our uh, map deep dives. With that, um, Adam, I wanted to just jump in uh, into Haven. As we look at Haven and we just think about what this means for how we play the map, obviously the biggest thing uh, the, the biggest part of this map that was new at the time was the three bomb sites. Obviously, we have other three bomb site maps now in Lotus. Uh, but when we look at this three bomb site map, at just a macro level, even f above playing attack or defense, at a macro level, what does this mean for how we think about playing the map? Yeah, it's a, it's going to be a game, like a mini game, to figure out what is weak. So if you're playing attack, you're looking for you know, where's the one or two player bomb site for defense, you're always looking for info or trying to gather some space so you fig you can understand what the attackers are doing. So the map feels a little bit more active in that sense, where I think map control is a lot more important on Haven compared to say a two bomb site map like Ascent, where it's kind of common on Ascent to just five man hit a site sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, on Haven, you get a lot more reward for kind of playing the map and kind of resetting and doing things like that um, than, than you do other maps. And how does this maybe contrast with our one other three bomb site map in Lotus? It's pretty similar, but I would say Haven specifically has more of a mid area, right? You have garage, which you can kind of like actively break Sentinel util a little bit more. So mm -hmm. a standard default on Haven, if you're doing a mid default is break trip garage or alarm bot and break turret slash trip on B. Whereas on Lotus, you're just actually kind of just walking front B and just clearing that angle and then mm. you're pretty much good to go. So I think it's a little bit easier to get that mid default going on Lotus just because it's like a very narrow lane. Whereas like Haven is a lot more open of a mid. I think the one other thing I want to ask your opinion on is the one big difference that I would notice would be that when you're playing Lotus, you can kind of cancel on A and just hit B pretty easily. And actually the same thing on C, you can just cancel on C, hit the door and get to B. Whereas B are actually all the sites on uh, Haven aren't as like, there's no like easy out. You're kind of like pushing down a lane. And if that's not working, like you're kind of having to a little backtrack a little bit to get to another site. You don't get to like go straight across. Yeah, I mean, that that's a really good point. Lotus gives you like that bailout feature on yeah. attack, kind of like bind where like if something's not working, you just hit the door, you take the TP. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think like the way that kind of plays on Haven, maybe that means that the push pull game is a lot more important, like your read on the map and what map control you take. Like there's not that, that fail safe for attackers. So um in in that way i think when you watch higher level matches haven feels like a more of a battle of igls mm -hmm. um comparatively to say lotus mm -hmm. or a bind and then maybe lastly at a macro level before we dive into kind of attack um and defense and comp um how do we think about a lobby yeah so a lobby is um probably one of the most important things to control either on attack or defense and it's pretty simple really as a defender if you control this line here you just you don't allow them into a short right which means you can just have one player spotting and you're able to now play one a and then your other a player will rotate over to b yeah. and basically you're stacking b and c which is super important because it's a three bomb site map Right, so in the inverse is true. If you're able to kind of like make a pressure or take a space, uh, this is most commonly done with the Cypher Cage, even though we show Killjoy here, um, you might omen smoke breaks to kind of get the same effect. Mm -hmm. um, just to open up the short lanes, and now defenders have to potentially play two towards A um, just to deal with the potential threat. And yep. then now B and C is weaker. So as you can see, just because A lobby is the gateway to a, an additional lane. That's why it's so important. If you can take uh, a lobby on attack or defense, you're forcing the other side to stay honest. Correct. So let's just talk about comp. Uh, we've kind of outlined a general comp here. Maybe just walk us through it, Adam. Yeah, I mean, jet. Uh, so that you can see the lanes here are pretty long. So having a jet to up on defense and then also to get out of the choke point with the dash is going to be pretty important. There's also a decent elevation that you can use on this map as well, so Jet's just a great pick. Um, Sova is going to be your 
main initiator here. His dart is really important to take A long control. Um, the drone is really important to help take C. Again, the drone is a little bit more important here just because Jet is such a huge pick. So you don't get opt. Um, Omen is a little bit more standard just because, again, the elevation, but actually the flash is super nice on this map, um, especially if you're executing A or C. Having the flash go into logs or if you're hitting A, going into graffiti or a site uh, will be really good. Um, along that line, I guess to quickly jump down, people like to pick the breach because Omen and breach kind of pair, like you get two line abilities. So you can kind of pair that in, but that's for your flex pick. And last but not least, the Killjoy is really, really good on this map, mainly because of the ult, in my opinion. I feel like the turret is good because you can control a lot of space a little bit more actively compared to a Cypher camera because you have to kind of toggle the camera. Um, but I think the main reason why people pick Killjoy over other Sentinels on this map is the A ults. Like you can ult A short and get full A site. You can ult on, on, on attack. On defense, you can ult A link in order to retake A and it's kind of mm -hmm. just a free round there. So, mm -hmm. Great. yeah. Okay, so let's just, uh, we'll kill all the uh, flex picks except for one. I'll let you decide who. Um, and maybe <laughs> we'll talk next about just rolling into attack. Maybe before we get into like attack, like really specifically, like when you're at the beginning of the round, when should you be hitting B? Like when does that become a consideration? Is that only like, I, I know you can just fast rush B, but like, is that generally more of a mid rounding choice? Like, is it correct that we're kind of thinking more like we're choosing between A and C and then mid rounding to B or, or is B like a really good choice is just a, a mix up or a tempo change? Like how, how do you think about you know, hitting sites when you're on attack. Yeah, I actually think you touched on all of the options there. So I think everything that you listed is actually correct in different situations. But to kind of go into each one, I think as a default, it's better to think about B as a mid-round choice mm -hmm. and like uh, adaptation change. So for example, if you're fighting A and then you spot three A, you might just pivot and go fast B. Um, more commonly, you would pivot and go fast C, but if you already have a player in mid, you might just take B. Yeah. Um, but yeah, B is that kind of like middle ground option that's not great for either side. Like if you plant B on attack, you don't have a clear advantage as you do on planting A or planting C. So it's not that attractive as an attacker that just to go B repeatedly. And of course, it's it's just one choke point on B, right? It's just a B entrance right. unless you, you somehow split, split. Yeah. So it's not attractive to attackers and it's also not attractive to defenders to play just because you can kind of play retake there yeah. um, a little bit easier. So yeah, it's more of a fallback option more than anything, or like you said, a surprise option. It's really good on eco rounds. It's really good to cheese. Um, our one strat that I kind of like to do, and maybe we'll go back into it, but there's an eco strat where you would plant and then get out and then kind of figure it out from there. So let's talk about just defaults. Um, is this a map where you would uh, default? Yes and no. I think the proper way to play Haven is to have a good default. So I'll quickly run through two. Yep. There's a mid default and an A default, okay. and there you should not ever see default unless you're playing like a double controller comp. Um, but basically, let's just go into the mid default. So if you're mid defaulting, you might have your turret back here. Killjoy is really crucial in this default just to cover the, the lanes. Um, so your turret here, I, I guess, after the nerf actually doesn't see the C walk, so you might have to bias it like this. Hopefully it sees garage peak and the C walk, and then yep. you would have your alarm, alarm bot here. Um, and then your killjoy is kind of going to go hover here. Um, and while your teammates are, or sorry, while you're kind of like holding the space here, your entire team pretty much just goes mid and breaks that trip that we were talking about earlier. In, in uh, garage? Um, in garage, in front B. If you have like Sova shocks for it, great. If you don't, then you know, you might smoke garage window. Um, and then like just take garage first, like either with a dart or something like that, and then just break the trip reset, right? And then your killjoy is hopefully just holding space and punishing anyone that pushes up. Um, you could also do the, at the same time, you could have someone break the front B trip. If there's like no op, you can like jump peek and then just spam the uh, trip on the side. Um, because this, if, if it's a cypher, this trip is always spammable on the right side. Okay. You can connect it to the left shelf like that, or you can connect it to the left here but that means that the right connection is always on the door. So you can actually pretty easily spam that with the gun. Um, but of course you could use a shock. So if, if it's, uh, sorry, if it's Killjoy, it's a lot harder because the alarm bot is, you know. Could be anywhere. You, 
you could be anywhere. So if that is the case, you might actually prefer to start your default in mid to break the alarm up first, or if you have a shock that lineup, that would that would solve it. But um, so yeah, mid default, you're just taking mid, you're not gonna commit to anything. You're just ideally pulling off that A rotate, and then um, you might go back and hit A late, or you might hit C late. Okay. So Killjoy's job is here just to hold. Okay. Um, really good default, you can pretty much open most of your rounds like this. Okay, okay so jump, jumping over to the A default, um, I am a little bit more biased towards the A default over the mid default because it does open up that lane of A short. Mm -hmm. And of course, mid default does open up the lane of garage as well. But I find that I like A site more compared to C site. I feel like it's easier to hold in the post plant. Um, I'm sure we could check the stats, but I would assume the A post plant conversion is higher on A than it is on C. Okay. So um, for that reason, I like to start A. And this is very easy for your killjoy actually. So your killjoy will not just put the turret on this box to hold any mid walk down. Let me just move these agents over. And then you'll have the alarm about C here. And the killjoy actually might solo work in mid. Um, kind of you, the killjoy can kind of like work into this cubby here. The killjoy could also work into this cubby here. And occasionally, if the killjoy hears noise, they actually might sneak into garage and break that trip herself. Right. So killjoy has a little bit more freedom on this default compared to the A default. Meanwhile, the A players are kind of just you know balls to the wall going and attacking. So there's a few ways to do this. My preferred way to start with is take long control and hold A short passively. So the way to do this is, let's just say like Omen TPs across and Jet smokes the um, entrance here just to avoid the up angle. And then they all like kind of just fight long with the sub dart. If you do have that secondary flex pick, it's ideally gonna be a flash player. So you can see all the uh, flex agents here aside from fade are flash agents. So if you do have the flash in this case, let's just say Phoenix is part of the comp, you might actually Phoenix flash through the jet smoke and then all fight long together with the dart and ideally clear out bricks here. Mm -hmm. And normally what ends up happening as a reaction from defenders is they smoke and you can get the orb, right? So you're not looking to rush A here. You're just looking to establish long control and then also um, potentially call a rotate over from B and that might give your kill an opening, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And after your silver darts, he might just kind of stare at short or he might drone short or whatever the case may be. So this is the traditional A default start. If you're having a lot of trouble um, taking A long, which tends to happen if you're playing against a jet op, um, like a really good defender hold, then you actually might just ignore long at the start and you take short instead. So um, yeah. this one I would say is a little bit more advanced in the sense that people aren't aware of it, but an easy way to do it is actually just to have your silver kind of dart here. There is a perfect dart that you can throw if, you want, if you're a silver player, you wanna learn a lineup. It lands on this wall here to scan the walk down and get a little bit of the cubby um, for the short control. And in this instance, you do want to have that omen smoke that we talked about at the very start on bricks, um, just to kind of like hold that long. Your omen will TP at the start, probably into this cubby, and then just hold the smoke while your other three players work down mid with that dart and then kind of just trade out. You might even sub a drone here. Your goal here is also to pull rotates, but again, just establish that short control or establish control on one of the A lanes while the other one's passively held. Okay. So in this case, the omen passively holds bricks. So what does an um, execute look like on A? So assume, you know, as, like you would do the default, you would pause, you would decide what you want to do. Obviously, if you got two kills long, right, then you're going to execute on A. And and if if you didn't get two kills, then then maybe you're thinking about, you know, based on what KJ's hearing, maybe you're mid-rounding, that's kind of the, the decision tree. But let's say you're going to hit A from here. Like what, what does that look like? Um, you know, I think, I feel like, a short is kind of like showers in bind where right. people can plant and they're like, why didn't anyone go short? And you get shot from showers or get shot from uh, a <laughs> short. Um, so like, what does a, what does an ideal split look like? Or is a split not that necessary? Oh uh, man, great question. Ideally you do have a split to some sort to control a short, but, um, but would you go two -two? Kind of, it's probably a two, two. It probably is going to be a two-two, but let's let's kind of go from this example where we take a short control and then look into the default, or sorry, executing from the default. Okay. So let's say we do get those kills. You're not going to have the dart, right? Because you just used it. Um, you're probably just going to drone into the exec, and then your omen, if he's long still, is going to blind the short cubby 
along with default at the same time. You see how this bind goes through? Mm -hmm. um, and going off of this execute, we use the brick smoke, whatever. He might have to solo clear it or like the Phoenix comes back to him or the jet comes back, whatever. Um, and he holds his bricks or clears bricks. Uh, that's more of a small detail, but the more important thing here is we might only have one smoke. So if you only have one smoke, it's completely acceptable to execute A still. You just have to smoke heaven and then you just look spawn, right? So omen blind, drone, smoke heaven. And then if your jet is coming from short, then the normal entry honestly is just uh, dashing out default, just to clear close left. Um, nothing crazy, but once you can kind of clear, I'll, I'll kind of actually just draw X's here. There's a few key spots on the A execute that you need to be wary of is graffiti, back site, and this X is actually for hell, not yeah. for heaven. And once you kind of deal with those three spots, you should have a pretty clean exec. So as what you can does, see in this case- What does case, good pathing look like for a duelist? So that's a tough one, right? So if you're coming from short as a duelist, you typically want to go around left side to pinch back side like this. So I'll just draw the arrow. If you're coming from long, then you want to go into this um, kind of wall here so you can see uh, a little bit more. A lot of people make the mistake, maybe I'll bring the jet back a little bit. If jet is coming from long, a lot of people make the mistake of actually dashing into default with the smoke like this, which actually gives that player back sight a chance to get into the smoke if they're close enough, because sometimes the jet throws the smoke a little bit close, and then the jet can get cheesed. So normally if you're executing from long as a jet, you want to dash into this wall here, so you also don't get hit by the omen blind and you can just peek out. If you have a sub dart here that lands with you, you can get the kill easily. Um, and then you immediately can see the spawn line and you're close to hell. Um, yep. So that would be the better routing. If you don't have dash because you use it at the start, uh, the updraft onto the short box is completely fine as well. It's pretty good sometimes you pair it with the smoke. Um, but yeah, what you're really trying to accomplish on this A exec is dealing with those X's. So you can see the smoke deals with heaven. Um, so now you have to deal with hell. If you come from long, you can kind of like angle it out a little bit. There's like a little corner they can hide in, but uh, that's also another reason why you go on the right side when you entry instead of hiding behind the box um, just to see the hell guy. The Omen Blind ideally clears back sight and then drone or dart or a flash deals with graffiti and then you kind of just go from there. Got it. Okay, cool. What does a post plant look like on A? Ooh, post plant, post plant. So, so default, let's put default spike first. So default's usually here. Right. Yeah, it's a good plant. Um, someone needs to go graffiti and someone needs to go hell oh. or like um, ammo. So is the four other people spot. long is not a good strategy. <laughs> Never. That <laughs> might work on C long actually, but or like for the C bomb site, but the A bomb site, you want to be on site almost always. Okay. I would say like 99% of the time you want to be on site, kind of like b binds B post plant. You want to be on site. It's even more so for A post plant on Haven. So ammo or hell or both, honestly graffiti to set up that crossfire and then you want to play your default to kind of ping pong between the two so you can see we actually have a really strong triangle mm -hmm. here yeah. so like the base the base level crossfire is a straight line which is a crossfire the advanced crossfire is a triangle just yeah. keep that in mind yeah. uh you can apply this on ascent as well if you're outside b but that goes to a different default i, I think, think the closest one actually is um uh oh, sunset a sunset you hide behind a. the default box oh yeah yeah that's a good one yeah so triangle set up in post plant, you're almost guaranteed to win the post plant. They come out spawn. If Omen still has flash, you flash. Otherwise you counter with other util, molly. Um, if your Omen is really good, he'll throw the one way smoke. There's um, a one way smoke, on... yeah, there. Yeah, so good. Um, it's better to re-smoke spawn than it is to re-smoke heaven if you're in the post plant. So because heaven just has to drop and then you can hear it. So right? this guy here, Sova, is really playing default close. Like he's, yes. he's just playing super close. He's swinging off of contact and not exposing himself to heaven. Yeah, you don't want to be holding heaven. If he wants to swing heaven, it's it's a mini game of peaking heaven, right? So you tuck, peak, tuck, peak, and then you can generally win that fight. But if you're like holding heaven, the guy heaven likely will kill you. So if he wants to fight, you can, but generally you will kind of just tuck, wait until that guy jumps out, and then you'll swing off of your teammate's contact. Yeah. Cool. Oh, and why and is this easier than C? As a post plant, you just yeah. have more spots, right? right? So the choke to get out of spawn in heaven is a lot harder, right? Because heaven, you have to drop and then spawn choke is pretty small 
for C, I mean, you can literally just walk out garage and you can walk out spawn, and there's not really a good one way for, for either. They, they're, like, one ways do exist for those, but people aren't as good at throwing them. And on top of that, I also find that the C postplant spots are worse. So like if you were to try to make another triangle, you can't, right? Um, you might have, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but like your postplant spots might look like something like this. Yeah. or like, It's just not as good. You get hit by more util as well, so. And as we're on A, how should we have, well, two questions maybe, like should we have someone long? And how how important is it for someone to be watching uh, the B flank? Yeah, that's a tough one. Ideally, flank is covered in some fashion. Passive so like fashion, if you're, ideally? Yeah, like maybe you have like a turret here and that would be great. Yeah. Um, but like, let's say you like your killjoy does come back. You just have like the turret on the flank and then your killjoy is kind of like jiggling heaven like this from yeah. short. So like your killjoy could do it instead of your sova. Um, that is like the ideal situation. But like yeah. if the turret does break, then your killjoy would break off and pick up flank and then go from there. Okay. Okay. Um, so we handled a mid default. We handled an A default. Um, when and how are you hitting C? So C is like a rush site. If you're gonna go C, you typically do it right away off rip. Um, this is honestly the thing I call probably the most on Haven because if I find that there's a gap in C, I will just slam C over and over and over and over again until it stops working. Yeah. Um, a lot of people like to do with this with C splits. I'm actually not a fan of C splits, but I'll explain in a second. Um, so let's talk about actually how to hit C first. Uh, let's see, bring everyone back here. Get rid of this turret. Okay, so C exec. Pretty standard. Your smokes are gonna go here and here, uh, garage and spawn. Uh, I like to throw the spawn smoke um, like that and not uh, deeper. Basically, I just don't wanna give them the angle with the box to fight us. Okay. So smoke that off. Your omen is going to go cubby, flash, logs. Your jet ideally is going to updraft dash onto top site. That's the best entry. If your jet doesn't wanna do that, then Plat updraft dash is also really good. And the kind of like normal jet dash that people don't really optimize is just dashing default and then you just go right side. And so and you're checking side. for, if we're talking about key spots and on this, we're thinking someone there, someone plat, someone box and someone logs. Yeah, this this also close. Uh, oh, close, let me change close, yellow. Yeah, close right. Yeah, so these are the definitely the spots. Um, close left is like an afterthought for me, kind of like how on a site the close right angle. Like I don't really think about it. Like I'll check it, like a, you know, quick glance, whatever. It's just not a spot that a lot of people play because you can't done. get away. Yeah, it's not a great spot. Like you can do it on ecos or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, logs. Close garage, backside, and plats. And honestly, the most, pro uh, the biggest danger on the C hit actually isn't the site players; it's the spawn smoke. Um, so to Why deal with this, because people flood. People flood your B and garage rotator. Like if there is, they're, they're gonna rotate pretty quick. They're gonna run through and help the site. Um, so and they also avoid every single piece of util that you just threw on the exec. Right, the omen blind doesn't hit the spawn smoke. The Silva Dart doesn't hit the spawn smoke. Yeah. Um, so you'll have to have like a, some killjoys actually will throw a spawn molly for that, which really good killjoys will do that. Uh, really good killjoys will have the molly for this cubby as well. So if you're a killjoy player, mm. definitely learn those. Uh, that's also, I guess, another benefit of playing killjoy over Cypher. Um, but yeah, typically your jet, if you go up draft dash top site, you clear everything at once. If you go on the floor, you can route right side following the blind and then kind of like come on the right side and pinch site, and that's great. Mm -hmm. um, your Phoenix is kind of just doing whatever, or like your flex pick is just assisting, kind of like scaling with. Mm -hmm. And then your Sova is uh, normally droning on round start. Uh, I kind of skipped this detail, but drone on round start just for an op. And yep. then you'll cancel the drone after you get info or a tag or whatever, and then immediately go into the dart. So there's a really easy dart. You just full charge, bounce, and then it lands like God spot here, and it like clears everything. Yeah. But if you if you don't want to do that one, then you can literally just peek and throw one back plat, or yeah. peek and throw it back site. Pretty standard. Yeah. Um, 
and you can effectively yield till dump uh, Seaside really easily, and that's why I think it's pretty good to kind of just bum rush C okay. um, until they actually have a good hold. And then are you, where are you playing Pulse Plant? Just falling, it's okay, so ideal default plant would be uh, here, I think, right? Uh, like beside that box? Yeah, yeah, that is the, or I would say, best. plat? Yeah, so that is God Plant on the bottom left corner there. Um, the two, like, so let's talk about the default plant real quick. A lot yep. of people make the mistake of planting here. Yep. And that's not good. You, It's better to plant on the side box like you had it. Just easier so it's to easier spam, to spam. Right? Exactly. So, um, and if you do do the box either or, uh, the post plant, you can one way it. So, there's a few ways to play the post plant on site or off site. Let's talk about on site first. Um, if you have a resmoke, typically you resmoke spawn because um, you can kind of peak garage because it's a longer lane. Um, you might have a player play like logs or like close to logs. I also really like to play like close spawn um, if the smoke is there. And I also am a fan of this backside angle because you can kind of support both. But my favorite position out of all of this is unsurprisingly default because I get to be the pivot player. So kind of like on a post plant, you can peak spawn off your teammates contact and garage. You can kind of pivot between both. So um, if you have like kind of like this pseudo triangle here, it's more so of like Phoenix has contact spawn while you have, uh, let's just put Omen here, kind of like jiggling your garage. You can kind of like timing peak, like three, two, one peak garage, and you're just hoping for the best here. Um, more commonly, I think in maybe higher level games like VCT, or if you're in like really low ELO and they're playing like lineups, it's actually super viable to play offsite. Uh, if you're playing offsite, you literally just spread and you might actually have like a player just fully wrap around to garage mm. um, while we're waiting. And then you one way the bomb, and then you just ping, 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 spam, do whatever you till you can and just hope for the best. And honestly, it works a little bit more than it should, so. Finally, B, we kind of st started talking about this at the beginning of the episode. So what does a fast B execute look like? I don't think we need to talk about the mid round. You're gonna walk out, do the thing in the mid round, but like, what does a fast B execute look like? You know, I think we typically see that more as a change up and as a bit of, sometimes as an eco as well. Yeah, so I mean, someone has to watch Garage. This is normally going to be your Killjoy, so you might have like a turret here. Yeah. Killjoy is also might throw a Molly there on round start, but you'll also see like Jets throw a one way smoke here. It's just make sure you don't die to the Garage peak at the start, yeah. basically. Um, and then you might also like Phoenix Flash for the mid walk down. When we get to defense, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but this angle is kind of threatening. Uh, so you might Flash for that, you might jump peak, you might just swing it. Um, as you get higher in the ranks, that guy is going to kill you more and more, so you want to use more util. But in the lower ranks, you probably get around with just get away with just jumping around the corner. Um, so, going into the B exec, what util, right? So the standard one is smoke, smoke, right? Smoke A link, smoke C link. You're going to dart back sight, and then you're going to updraft dash onto the shelf or onto B site. Mm -hmm. um, I have a preference on the shelf because I feel a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. But if you're going with the dart. Um, you can just go top site with the smoke. And uh, your Phoenix will typically flash close as you're dashing out mm -hmm. and then route right side. It's important that you route right side and not left side because you have more space to work with. Left side has that shelf blocking you, which sucks if there's a back site guy. Um, and the main goal of this is you're on the B exec, you're clearing close, which is pretty quick. And then you want to clear the gong player, which is back site here. And then once you have that, you can play on site, which is not great, but you can. But the better approach actually is when the smoke is fading, the A-Link smoke, you want to use util and fully take A-Link. Yep. And this might be counterintuitive actually, because most of the time your B plants, oops, I got rid of the smokes, but that's fine. Uh, most of the time your B plants actually gonna be in this corner. So that's something you have to decide maybe at the start of the round or whatever, but if you're gonna plant into this corner, you might actually just plant and then all leave site and then just spam from here mm -hmm. because it's easier to spam. Uh, you'll probably have a player here. I mean, that's fine. But if you're playing on site and you're taking A-Link, it might be better to plant in the middle. We're actually into this um, other corner here yeah. um, because you can see it from A-Link. Yeah. And honestly, most B exec conversions are gonna be higher. If you can take A-Link, it's just a little bit riskier. Yeah. Um, 
So it's good to do on eco rounds, things like that. Well, and I just want to point out, I feel like you're going to take a link when you feel like you've taken B pretty successfully and you can feel like there's a timing to take mm. a link, you know, like where they're, they feel like they're prepping to flood and then you are kind of flooding them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's good to know. It's, it's definitely a timing thing and you kind of want to catch them off guard. You can kind of catch sure. them in the rotate. Because yeah. they're often thinking you're probably playing offside. Um, awesome. So that is attack. Um, that B kind of fast rush B, that would be one eco. Are there any other eco kind of eco slash cheese strategies that come to mind for you on attack? There is a cheese one. Um, I like to call this one. It's, it's really weird, but you just bum rush garage and you smoke here. And then you actually do a B split with the garage. Like, cause like you normally can't B split, but if you just go through garage, you can actually make it work sometimes. If you just like run through the window and you might have like one player front B or something. And then you're just looking to pinch the player that plays C link. Got it. So something weird, something creative, you can probably get it to work. You know, I did the, the eco strategy you said the other day for buying, which is like five mm -hmm. people buy stingers and go through hookah. And it yeah. worked like a charm. That guy it's was so like good. terrified. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Uh, it's so good. Fifty percent of the time it works every time. Actually, it feels like it yep. works more than that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, that's attack. Yeah. When we move on to defense, then we'll flip the map around. There we go. And if we're looking at defense now, what does typical positioning look like? We're gonna have to sell out on one side or try to use util to spread ourselves around. So, what what does that typically look like, Adam? Yep, um, and C, Killjoy, Garage, slash B, Hover, um, and then you actually play 3A most of the time. Um, so it might look something like, actually, let's just, maybe we'll do it like this. I'm a little bit more of a fan of the Flash Agent on long, but uh, basic rundown here is you'll have turret on shelf because it's harder to break instead of the alarm bot. You have alarm bot garage, and then you play uh, Molly on jet dash, and uh, your other molly you can put whatever. Sometimes people put double molly B, sometimes people put molly garage, but depends on what you're doing, this is standard. Sub level yeah. dart, lobby, jet might fight. Your omen actually might even give a smoke at the end, uh, just to fully. So this is your A lobby, 3A control. Okay. Um, you actually, um, this setup is, it looks like a 311, but it's actually more of a 302 in which your killjoy would flood onto C site with your omen if yeah. they're hitting C. So you're playing to hold A and C and you're playing retake B. Yeah. And so really the and checkmate here is if someone really, really knew what exactly you were doing, that full rush B is is like completely open. You just take out a turn and the site's completely open. Yep. Free site, you can play it, you can play yeah. spam. It's yeah. But just so that only a maniac would do that. <laughs> yeah, if right. you have a hard read. Yeah. Um, um but really actually this is a 302 but it's a 302 only off rip like if you can control if you can if this were a gun round uh jet has an op if you've taken a lobby control then you would you would leave jet long and just sell out sova and phoenix would leave and just go b or c correct they would probably go back mid use the drone clear out front b if he's there, flash, kill the guy, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, if you have the op line, you can control A lobby. It's really good to leave your jet okay. and pretty much just win, win the round off of that. Um, of course, your jet could be long and then you could have the Silva here and you don't need the Phoenix, yep. in which case you might actually have the Phoenix, like the Killjoy and Phoenix sometimes will double up. Um, like a cheese strat you can actually do is you have the turret, not there, actually shelf for the walk up mid. And then uh, it, it Oh, he ping. flashes off contact. Yeah, he flash out with this guy and gets the kill. That's something like FNS does a lot. Um, and then you'll kind of just do the same thing with the Jet and the Sova A. So um, you can get a little bit more greedy and play a 2-2 with the Killjoy and Phoenix. Um, but yeah, defense, there's... Um, that. So the standard is the 302, maybe like the 2-2-1. Uh, and you rarely will kind of like full take mid. Mid is like a lot more of a passive yeah. thing. But just to kind of hop into it real quick, this walk down mid to fight this player grass is very good. The so okay, angle. just like walk me through this. Cause when you said this on the attack side, I could totally see someone being surprised. I think for most, like, especially like someone low eel like me on this walk down mid, I'm just terrified of getting peak window. 
Are you having someone hold you window? Ideally, yes. You could also have the Killjoy turret hold you window. Um, the easiest way to do this um, is actually have an agent with elevation jump up there. So if you have your omen top B, um, your jet could walk down. If your jet is top B, you could have your Killjoy walk down even. Um, if you're playing Arena, then the Reyna would walk down or the Phoenix would walk down. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I'll do it solo. So ooh, there's, a, there's a really good strat that I'm kind of, I love to do when I'm playing solo queue. I'm like, hey, Jet, can you walk down mid? And then if I'm playing Phoenix or Omen, I'll play Garage and Flash off the contact because notice how the contact here is wider. Yeah. So this Flash is guaranteed to hit anyone wider and then you kind of swing out and get the kill. But the threat is window. And honestly, the window threat isn't actu actually scary unless they have a pot flash. So what I mean by that is if you're playing against Phoenix, KO, Sky, Breach, then the window peak is scarier. But if it's like a Reina blind or if it's just a dry swing, most of the time, and this is gonna sound kind of weird, but most of the time the jet on defense can actually flick over and still get that kill because the guy swinging front B, I'll just put ISO in this example, is normally pre-aiming the guy on B, front B like this, or the guy top B. So he actually yeah. like, you're kind of like in this weird sight line where he's swinging past you and you can kind of like both react to each other. And if you have it in your mind, like in your head that there could be a window swing, you typically can get the kill. I so. wonder if also most people play right-handed gun models. I think yeah, you kind does of cover be in the gun model. It does, That's it does crazy. cover it. Yeah, small detail, but it definitely. Oh, uh, so just the pro tip would be before you swing window, go and <laughs> switch the left-hand model, swing window, <laughs> re-switch it back. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's a cool strategy okay i mean it just feels counterintuitive because it feels so exposed but i feel like it, it sounds like it's just one of those strategies where you're kind of catching that guy grass like kind of uh unawares yeah the other thing too is we didn't actually talk about c split on attack but when c splits occur you get contact in the guy garage and you completely kill the c hit instantly yeah, so i've dead. had a yeah. lot of yeah i've had a lot of instances where i've been the jet killed the guy garage rotate like dashed away or rotated back made it on c in time for the c long guy to come up and then killed the player here as well so you can kind of like get two contact points on the c split if you happen to read it's a c split or you get lucky great so it's pretty good so those are the typical defaults um or position uh, default positioning for for defense um how do you think through uh lurks like so Sova, Jet, let's say Sova's, let's say Jet's not long. Sova takes control of A lobby, pings the, his recon bolt, uh, A lobby, no one's there. Is he kind of starting to like try to take control of kind of this, this lane here? Uh, yeah. And, and, and really yeah. fighting their rotates or, or should he be rotating back with this team like like what is the thought process there because i think that's a dilemma that a lot of people run into when when you're when you're defending a site no one's there and you feel like you need to be doing something yeah this is a tough problem to solve because the answer is different depending on how they're playing so the quick answer is if they're playing a fast attack if there's no one there everyone rotates and just goes b or go c right because like they're not gonna like rotate back. But if they're playing a slow attack and they're defaulting, you want actually not the Sova, but the jet to push up. And if you double push it, that's fine. You can actually drone through and get your jet this angle. But most of the time your jet will push through and hold this line, especially if the jet's holding an op. Um, you can hold this line. This was um, a really good line. Uh, and then your Sova will then rotate back off of A to B and then use the drone to gather more info on what's happening. So that's like a more standard, like kind of checks all the boxes. That's not too aggressive, not too passive approach. Yeah. Um, if this jet is playing rifle on attack, or sorry, on defense, you actually might want to go more forward because you it's a little bit more mobile of a gun and they can actually sometimes catch people running back here. It's super high risk, something that you'll do kind of like if you hear a lot of mid noise, like maybe if this drone gets like three mid, right? And you can push up and look for a fight. But it's definitely something that you want to do that's a little bit more calculated. Okay. Um, so yeah, let me just question. ask you a question. This this line that you're taking here, um, that kind of looks through into kind of this rotate. The power in this, if I'm guessing, is that you actually, if you have an op, you actually get the line twice. You get it there, 
and then you get to fall back here and do it again. Yeah, correct. There's a, a really, I don't know if it's famous, but there's a yay clip of him doing that and that completely shut down the round. So okay. yeah, you get two chances there. Um, sometimes, sometimes a little bit more. I guess I will note if you're playing rifle, it's actually a little bit more common for your rifle to play the off angle here instead of the deep line. Um, just because the deep line is harder to convert with a rifle. Sure. So. Cool. Um, so let's go through just defending executes on A. Uh, so let's say the uh, enemy team has taken A long and is A short. Where are we playing on site? Like, are we, are we, are we okay giving sight? Or are we, you know, dying on site, we're fighting hell, um, hoping for fast rotates? Like, what, what's the thinking there? So... Generally, because the post plant is so difficult for defenders, like the retake, sorry, the post plant is so good for attackers, you do kind of want to die on sight. Um, there's a few things I want to point out here. Sometimes you'll actually play on the round start, your jet or your omen on the short box, hoping they execute and you get some cheese kills. That happens a lot. Um, during the execute, you want to pick a lane to fight. So you actually don't want to turtle up and play like some mm. type of weird crossfire like this like you're probably gonna lose um the meta evolved right before the map got taken out there was this mid site smoke like this uh kind of hard to picture but um this was like the meta smoke that your omen would use as a rotating smoke i don't know if you're calling a scent there was that backside b smoke um this is like the a smoke instead of doing like a standard flush short smoke like this or a standard one way or like a long smoke the smoke would be like this. I guess it's kind of like bind. So you can deny plant. You can control. Like if you do want to play on site and you can't actually control short, this is the smoke you do. And honestly, sometimes you even go through the smoke and take the well, risk. It just gives you tons of options as a defender. Yeah. It cuts off a lot of sight lines. Like it funnels them into the left lane here. It It's just, yeah, it's, it's a nice smoke to use. Um, mm. And it lets your CT guys flood out and have to only look left. Mm. So... That's really nice. Um, I think people also mistakenly throw it like that, where short is open. You don't want to do it like that because now you can see your spawn guy is in danger. So make sure you're using the smoke that covers mid site and mm. short. That's so um, powerful. Like now that you see it, you're like, oh, it feels so good to have this jet holding this smoke and then everyone flooding, just holding left side of the default box. Yeah, and if you have util, like let's say you have like a flash agent, very commonly your jet will actually as the smoke is popping will take the smoke yeah. and sit into it and then you'll get util to come out of it and kill the short guy yeah, yeah. or you get util to come out of it and kill the long guy there's like yeah. a really good silver dart that lands up here um if you're playing sky you can flash yeah. through the smoke like this like yeah. it just gives your jet options it lets your rotators come in like that's mm. the best way in the updated meta that i've seen to hold down a if you can't instinct like initially hold the a lobby hold uh if that makes sense yeah yeah it's interesting like it's just so different it's just it's so different than the typical smoke there like that smoke is more like prevention right and this smoke is more like options mm. yeah really good smoke mid -site smokes are like the next step to actually being good like of course the standard short smoke yeah. will probably work for like the well, majority that's, that's of players the, that's the thing like a controller would do that would really help you and I think a lot of people wouldn't even notice it because in the chaos of a round, right? Right. right. Uh, but it's not dissimilar to this this C site smoke, right? Yep. So th that's a that's a good thing to pivot to. If you're gonna hold C, if you don't have that smoke, you're probably not gonna be able to hold down C. Yeah. So really yeah. good smoke. So maybe we'll go over to C. If you're defending the site exact C, um, you're probably you're not pushing down long, right? Um, you're yeah. trying to control garage. Like, what's your thinking uh, for a C exec? Yeah, so you you actually just want to spot garage just to know if it's a C split or not. But very rarely will you actually play to hold garage. If you're playing to hold garage, you're not even on C in the first place. You're just having a double garage setup. So that's a different hold in general. But let's just say like the killjoy turret here, your killjoy is floating. There's um, a few ways to play C as omen. The omen is really the key here. You either jump spot, this is what most players do. I don't do this because this box is super spammable and you just get completely destroyed nowadays. So I don't go for that jump spot, but you could TP onto this box and play the off angle on the walk up here. And then you could peek out later on timing, like when you see util, get a kill, drop down, and then smoke mm. mid-site. That's a good way to do it. 
Um, if you want a spot for info on ground start, start plats either on top or bottom. Switch it up. Don't do the same one multiple times if they spot you. You actually like ADS hold the crack here and then immediately you take one shot, whatever. And then like you tuck, you smoke, and then get ready to blind. And then you can blind to counter their util, take a fight on the jet dash. And then after that, you'll smoke mid site. So it's really important that your omen is a good C anchor because if he can do this, he can solo hold and win the round just off of that util. Great. Well, and, and but I want to point out that each of those strategies you just gave is kind of omen as a site anchor, almost having like a three or four step plan. Yes, yes. Like he's playing this have... as a bit of a, a flow chart. That's um, any good site anchor needs to have an anti rush strat. If they come to my bomb site, what am I doing here, 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 here? Mm -hmm. That will like level up you, like give you so much advantage compared to all of your peers, because I can promise you, even in immortal games, I've worked with so many clients, they have no idea. Like they just hold down the, like a rush um, reactively. Mm. Whereas like, if you can come up with the step plan and you can kind of like figure out what's going on, like, let's say like you get that uh, angle, you take that pot shot, you throw the smoke, Maybe instead of having blind out, you're pre-aiming the Sova dart and then you mm -hmm. flash after. Like you need to be thinking about all this stuff because it's gonna happen, right? Util is very strong in this game. So I mean, if the dart catches you off guard and you get scanned, like your flash isn't gonna do anything. They're just gonna shoot you through the flash, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, as a site anchor specifically, you have to have that step play, like specifically sentinels, right? Like cipher, you're gonna do this, this, this. Like yeah, that's really important. I'm glad you you brought that out. Well, and so yeah, I think this is true of Omen. KJ and, and Cypher, all the, these anchor anchor agents, um, I guess Viper too, in some ways. Mm -hmm. But I, I think like what's really cool is, is if we just think about, you know, our experience as players, how often do we die on site and we feel like we didn't get to play the game? Like we die on site because we didn't get to play the game because the five man exact and in the chaos of the U-tail and trying to navigate it all and us trying to like make sense of it all, like we, we, we get killed. We don't even get, we don't even fire a shot. Right. And I feel like the way you're thinking about it is we're pre-planning for that chaos. And when this chaos happens, like we are kind of just like wading through it kind of like, it's like a still pond of calmness for us. Cause we already has this, we have this plan and we're just unfolding it. And then we're able to, because we already have an idea what's coming. We have this ability then to wade through that chaos with some level of composure that we can actually handle the new wrinkles that they throw up. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I'll add to that is preparation is very easily one of the biggest edges you can get over your opponents because Valorant is just a game of patterns, right? Like most executes are the same, like at least for like, you know, small details here and there. So if you can prep for that and you're ready for that, you're going to win a lot of games. This goes into everything with Valorant, right? Like pre-rounds, like on attack, like, you know, what do you know about their default? Like I just, like we just talked about the, the 302. Like if you know that, you might want to call a B-Rush on pistol, right? Like it's just, you understand like the general blueprint and then you play around that. And then until the enemy team plays in a way that's out of that blueprint, you mm -hmm. just continue countering the original blueprint. Mm -hmm. And you can get really, really, really far with that kind of thought process. And that, that's why like ranked IGLs, like people that IGL in ranked do so well is because they actually don't have to adapt often, yeah. right? Like Dasnerth, Xander comes to mind. If you don't, like Dasnerth will adapt to what you're doing in one round or two, and then he'll just win the game off of that because everyone else is on autopilot. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's a whole different topic, but um, I'm glad you pointed it out. No, and I think that's probably a good future topic. I think a few people have asked in the comments, like, what does that look like? Um, so A, we would rather die on site. C, are we dying on site? Or are there situations where Omen is falling back off site and we're playing retake? I guess, obviously, we're, we're considering a retake if we've got uh, a KJ out. Um, but what does the decision making look like around falling off site? And what does retake look like? Great question. So if I'm playing Omen, I will play retake if they have Savolt. I will play retake if I'm playing against a random Yoru. For some reason, Yorus are picked on this map and Yoru is just insane. I will play retake if they are playing ISO ult. Um, now that ISO is in the pool again, be careful because the ISO ult, once you get spotted by the drone, you're going to die either way after. Even if you kill the ISO, they're going to run out the site and kill you, mm. right? So you can't play on site against those ults. Um, 
You might be able to play on site against like Skyol. It's probably not that good. Rocket, you might want to play retake. But yeah, the general theme is like if you're gonna get run down by ults, just play retake. Um, what the actual retake looks like. Um, there's a little bit of variation, but my preferred way to retake isn't actually all through spawn. Take garage first before you do anything. Clear out the guy lurking mid. This is kind of like a scent when you're retaking A, the door is closed, you re-clear cat before you go and break the door. Yeah. You kind of want to do the same here, clear mid. Um, come back, and then once you actually go into the retake, the util is going to look like this. So you have omen blind for logs and default, and the angle that actually most people don't think about is actually like this little corner by plat. I call it pancake, but I don't know why I call it pancake. Um, so that's that. And then your Sova ideally will dart on this wall along with it. Yeah. Uh, time it with the omen blind. That's really important on Haven. You want to omen blind and dart at the same time, so it's harder to break. Uh, and then you go from there. If you have util to clear back plat, that's a bonus. If you have something to clear uh, the close angle like here or here, that's a bonus. And don't smoke long if you're playing omen. Smoke the bomb. Smoke bomb. Because we talked about on attack, you yeah. can play spam. You want to be able to shoot back on yeah, the attacker. Yeah, you want to smoke so. the bomb so you can take fights. Exactly. Um, occasionally, if you have two smokes, you can smoke top C, uh, the box, TP into it. And it also makes that default guy not be able to swing you. And then you can throw your second smoke on bomb. That's pretty good too. Okay. Uh, and of course, people would be coming out garage and CT at the same time. Great. Um... Are we, what does the A retake look like? Similar kind of like flavor, I would say. Kind of um, sucks so, coming through heaven. Yeah. It, like is, it it really even, is it worthwhile to have someone in heaven? Yes. Um, typically if you have a flash agent. So okay. actually I love to go heaven if I'm playing KO. Cause like you can do like a right click flash that gets hell and graffiti and the hell guy can't react. Cause it like pops perfectly on the screen. But if you're not playing a KO, you can actually do a Phoenix flash just the same but you have to actually jump on the ledge, which makes it a little bit more risky. Um, it is also another reason why you don't re-smoke Heaven on post-plant as an attacker, because if the smoke is there and you're playing against a flash, you give them the opportunity to go into the smoke and flash yeah, and out. Set up. Yeah, Yeah. so, um, but if there is a smoke there, you, you know, you're pretty good to go. So your flash agent typically goes Heaven. You have your Omen blind graffiti and default at the same time. Your Sova will dart onto this wall here, and then everyone just floods. If your jet is coming spawn, he'll dash out here. If he's coming out of heaven, he'll smoke dash out default or whatever, like he'll do something crazy. Um, and you will smoke short 90% of the time. Um, just because if you come out spawn, the short guy gets contact on you. So yep. uh, yeah, that's the, the retake. If your Phoenix is really good, you will molly this as well or molly default. Molly default is really good as well. Okay. Um, are there any weird eco strats you would do on defense? Uh, I mean, the standard is like stack short or stack C or yeah. go garage with a shotgun. Um, my favorite, like, weird strat to do on eco is like actually like a long stack because people don't really expect you to stack long on eco. Yeah, um, sure. And I'll kind of just like sit here, like, one guy will break the dart, and then if you have like a piece of util to fight off of, like either like a Phoenix blind or like an Omen blind you can kind of just like blind the lane and all swing together. Assert dominance with uh, four classics. Yeah, long, sometimes right? it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes there. if they're not ready for it, I can totally see it, especially if you can flash. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there anything we didn't cover on Haven that you feel like we should? Mm, I don't think so. I think we covered the general stuff. We? A lot of the other stuff is micro stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, awesome. That's that's it, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We hope this was helpful as Haven re-enters the map pool. This helps you with your uh, ranked grind. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we always appreciate it. Until next time. Peace out.